position. Donald J. Trump is now President of the United States. President Obama is the ex-president. Mr. Trump, for the moment, steps Trump derangement syndrome. Everyone knows multiple people who recoil in horror at the mere mention of his name, a trigger of the highest order. Sometimes they go nuts, so it can be fun to watch. Some afflicted refuse to so much as engage with anybody that might speak so much as neutrally of the man. Those affected with TDS are insufferable in their criticisms, unmitigatingly harsh, and cannot give the man credit for any single positive thing that he might have done or accomplished. Undoubtedly, every evening at their dinner table, they spill venom upon it. I wouldn't know for sure, as I've never been invited. Thank God, though, that I've never had to taste their hemlock tea. The question that I pose today is, is there an opposite of TDS on the Trump hand side of the aisle? If so, what is it and how has it manifested? I believe I have what is a pretty solid answer to the question that was originally postulated by Brett Weinstein and to a lesser degree, Sam Harris. If you question my logic or you agree with it, after you watch the whole video, I would really love it if you left a comment so that we could start a discussion about this. I really want to know your thoughts. How am I qualified then to comment on this? Well, until recently, I was a lifelong Democrat. I assure you that my walk away moment was not precipitated by a personal love and admiration for Donald Trump. It was much more seeing the it leftists gain further influence in the Democratic Party, where they started to spread hatefully, racially based politics to the point where Martin Luther King himself has been vilified and demanding that we take a sledgehammer to the First Amendment. And the more that people, Democrats, former friends, denigrate me for my shift in gears, the harder I have to fight the urge to dig in. That said, again, I want to answer the question of what is the opposite of TDS and why does it exist at the rate that it does? In doing so, let's first examine Trump's base and how easy it would be for the Democrats to ply them away to vote blue. Layer one, Trump is their savior. There is no doubt that Trump has a base of rabid, enthusiastic supporters, generally people who credit him with helping them keep their jobs, their livelihoods, keeping bread on the table, versus seeing their jobs and their factories exported overseas. To them, he can do no wrong. To them, he is orange man God, or to put it in an acronym, OMG. OMG is the opposite of TDS. We'll get into the spread and prevalence throughout Trump land momentarily. Layer two, people who have always been conservatives. It probably won't be easy to pry them away from the Donald, uh, given their natural set of beliefs, but definitely some of them will. Obviously, some of them did vote for Obama twice for whatever reason, so there is some malleability there. Not much, but given the fact that OMG has spread so rapidly throughout this group as well, it's going to be impossible this election season to get them to vote any other way. Layer three, those seeking refuge from the hateful left. I'm talking about being openly racist against white people, simultaneously stating that such a thing isn't possible because it's, they're white, meanwhile using racists as their default debate trump card. The mocking of Christian values and beliefs and people while promoting Islam as the most peaceful and tolerant of the world's religions, while turning a blind eye to their treatment of both women and gays. In fairness, homosexuals who don't like the fact that they are executed in some Islamic countries, such as Iran, based solely on their sexual proclivities, can always choose to leave the religion of peace stating that speech is violent and trying to burn the First Amendment to a crisp, pushing for socialism, which has been utterly disastrous wherever it's been tried, and completely antithetical to American values, locking people in their home for months out of its time, extending lockdowns based on fear, all the meanwhile releasing violent felons from jail so that they don't catch corona, while imprisoning a hair salon owner for opening and wanting her fellow stylist to be able to put food on the table.
trying to create a 1984-like state where people are financially rewarded for tattling on their neighbors, for not socially distancing as proposed by some heavy-handed Democratic mayors. Count me amongst this rapidly growing group. This is the reason I virtually guarantee that Donald Trump is going to win in a landslide and the Republicans are going to retake the House. The move away from the Democratic Party is incredibly strong. I won't tell you that there aren't people that haven't moved from Republican to Democrat. There are. However, it is dwarfed by the move from blue to red. In fact, the move in that direction is so strong and the red base has become so unified that I don't believe even today that Moses himself could part the Red Sea. But then I listen to Sam Harris wonder aloud, and I consider him a brilliant wordsmith of the highest order. And he doesn't understand why Trump supporters won't listen to the evidence against him of being a terrible president, a pathological liar, the worst kind of statesman who cost the United States standing in the world community. Why won't the people of Trumpistan, a derisive word that Sam uses, listen to reason and truth and back away from the massive short fuse bomb a second Trump presidency will be? The truth. I'm going to go ahead and presuppose that everything that Sam has to say is accurate. I'm not saying that it is, but I'm going to go ahead and make that assumption. All he has to do is to get those of us in Trumpistan to switch allegiances is to swallow his pill of truth. Here's why that is going to be absolutely ineffective. Whatever ingredients are in your pill, Sam, will not be absorbed. You mentioned George W. Bush's comment asking for Americans to unify and Trump's mocking response to him. I totally disapprove of Donald's attitude here. It was unhelpful, unpresidential, and it was polarizing. In no possible way can I defend it. But you know why you'll need a million more of these examples to make a difference? The media. The MSM has completely overplayed its hand in terms of its desire for short-term revenues to generate clicks via sensationalistic headlines and reporting, otherwise known generally as lies. The public has come to see this as merely more cries of wolf every new headline that comes out. Wolf, wolf, wolf. We're not paying attention. The continued attempts to take him down. The false framings. The misquotes. The absolute lies and smear attempts. The problem is the media tried to spread truth about Donald Trump time and time and time again. Lie after lie after lie. CNN, The Washington Post, New York Times, and the Democratic Congress have all been trying to ram down this serum of truth down our throat, down into the throats of Trumpistan. You want us to see the world via your paradigm. Every single time, it seems, or at least mostly, that it was a vile lie or a misrepresentation. First, every concerned citizen wants to be fair. We want to listen. There is no such thing yet as a, an orange man God syndrome. It hasn't taken hold in our system, in our brains. Examples. The Democrats, aided by every single media outlet not named Fox News, continue to ram down our throats the idea that Donald Trump colluded with the Russians. Adam Schiff says that he has 100% verifiable proof that Donald Trump is a Russian agent, that there was collusion going on. For years, we have to endure the supposed Russia scandal, prime time on every media outlet. Thanks for wasting our time. Thanks for panicking us. Panicking us. Thanks for lying to us. OMG rises. The Washington Post describes the death of Abu al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS, a mass murdering organization who wants to enslave the world in their dark vision, who is personally responsible for the death of thousands of people as an austere religious scholar. O.M.G. rises. Tell us that Brett Kavanaugh is a rapist while propping up stories that were later recanted and putting on the stand a woman who has no corroboration 30 years after the fact and was caught lying about other things. 
Meanwhile, you tell us that Biden, who has at least some echoes of evidence, needs no investigation. Right, New York Times? Just like the countless articles you wrote regarding Kavanaugh? OMG rises. After Donald Trump's State of the Union, the Washington Post's headline, A Discordant Appeal for Unity. Is that news or opinion? You want me to swallow that? OMG, orange man God rises. Donald Trump institutes a travel ban on China. The Democrats call it xenophobic and immediately try to overturn the legislation. Then, when it turns out that Trump was right, they complain he did not go far enough and that he is not worthy of being president. OMG. Don Lemon and his guests openly mock Trump supporters. Obviously, it's false. And look, he also knows deep in his heart that Donald Trump couldn't find Ukraine on a map if you had the letter U and a picture of an actual physical crane <laughs> next to it. He knows that this is, you know, an, an administration defined by ignorance of the world. And so that's partly him playing to their base and playing to their audience, uh, you know, the, the, the credulous boomer rube demo that backs Donald Trump um, that, that wants to think that... That, that Donald Trump's a smart one in there. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all elitists are dumb. <laughs> you, you elitists with your geography and your maps and your spelling, even though my your math and your reading. <laughs> yeah, your reading, you know, your geography, knowing other countries, sipping your latte. <laughs> All those lines on the map. <laughs> <laughs> Only them elitists know where Ukraine is. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. Is but by, but, but Ukraine. Ukraine. Oh my God! But, but, but you know what? But, but it was Rick's fault. I blame Rick. Oh but, you know, but, but in all honesty, but all, blame you know what Rick. NPR should do? Why not? Sorry, hold on. You, wait, wait. Can I tell give you me what, a second. You, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry. <laughs> that was good. Sorry, Rick. You, that you, was a good one. I needed that. O M G. Excoriate Trump for making a bad locker room joke when he thought he was in private years ago, but ignore the actual pussy grabber. OMG. The list goes on and on, and honestly, it's sickening. So go ahead, Sam, give us the pill of truth. But as it looks similar to the other narratives that the media has tried to infect us with, the body's defense system has developed resistance to the form that it comes in. It's treated as an invading virus of foul play because that's what the media has thrown at us. We become inoculated. That's what orange man god syndrome is. The opposite of TDS. Barring some major catastrophe, there's almost no way that anybody who's chosen to vote for their orange man god is going to change their mind. And when you liars and peddlers of falsehoods and slanted hateful bias examine the reality. Hopefully you'll become aware that you are largely responsible for the continued polarization of America, for the resistance of the population to what might be actual truth, because you've been shoving down emergency truth serum antibiotics down our throats at every single opportunity. You've created orange man god syndrome, where people on the right are simply unwilling to listen. And when you look at yourself in the mirror, Chris Cuomo, Don Lemon, The Washington Post, and everyone at MSNBC, and the reflection looks back upon you, and you have the dawning realization that you are not only responsible for the spread of orange man god syndrome, but also the downfall of the public's trust in journalism. The only thought that I hope goes through your head is, O M G. Peace and blessings to everybody out there. Leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the subject. I think it's an interesting one. Let me know if I'm right. Peace and blessings.